Welcome to Fearlessly Feral Living. This is Reverend Karen coming at you. And the title of today's episode is May the Fourth Be With You. And if you haven't guessed it, yes, today is May the 4th, 2023, as I'm recording this. And I have a great fondness for Star Wars. So today I'm going to talk about Star Wars, but I'm going to do so in a very specific way. I have a collection of my favorite quotes from almost all of the Star Wars movies. And I'm going to talk about them in terms of the spiritual principle that they represent So before I get to it, I'm going to do my official introduction so that, because I have to do that. I don't know why I have to do it. I just do. So welcome again to Fearlessly Feral Living, broadcasting to you from the Woogie Ranch out here in the back 40 of northwestern Nevada, where I'm a half an hour away from the nearest gas station and the nearest grocery store. This is a podcast devoted to using new thought principles to ensure successful, creative living. Fearlessly Feral is a focus ministry of Centers for Spiritual Living. We teach the science of mind, and we're devoted to a vision of a world in which everyone lives fearlessly feral, in other words, wild and free. We blend spirituality and psychology to work from the inside out to promote successful, wild, and free living. So here we go. May the 4th be with you. And I don't know why I didn't grow up Catholic or in any other Christian-based religion, but I always want to say, and also with you, after I say that phrase, I'm sorry. Just It's just the way it is, you know. We can have a little bit of fun with this stuff. And I don't. I hope that I wasn't too irreverent for some of you folks. So Star Wars is my all-time favorite movie. It trumps everything else. It's just, I just love it. Star Wars is full of spiritual wisdom. And today I'm going to do something a little different with this podcast. I don't really have a script. All I have are the quotes that I want to draw on. And then I'm going to talk about the spiritual principles behind the quotes and how we might apply those in our lives. So this podcast might turn out really, really nicely, or it might totally bomb. We'll just have to see what happens. So I don't know if you know this or not, but the creator of Star Wars, George Lucas, we know that he had that Science of Mind textbook on his bookshelf. How do we know that? Because there's a picture that was taken of him during an interview. And you can see the Science of Mind textbook plain as day in the background of that picture. So I prefer to think that George Lucas studied that textbook, that he may have even taken a few classes at a Center for Spiritual Living somewhere along the line. But when I hear these quotes in Star Wars movies, there's something, he's he's got science of mind nailed. He really does. So here's the first quote. I felt a great disturbance in the force. Yeah. Okay. This one's really powerful. I will never forget the first time I felt a great disturbance in the force. I was living on an 80 acre horse ranch, which was kind of at an in-between period in my life, kind of isolated from daily living I was going to ministerial school at the time and working my way through school by getting up early every morning and venturing outside cleaning horse stalls, of which there were about 30 of them. Anyway, I would wake up in the morning and feel this utter devastation. And I couldn't figure out why. I didn't know why I was feeling this. And... Not coincidentally, I was at a point in my life where I was really working at nurturing and strengthening my connection with a God of my understanding, the one, the force, if you will. I I wanted to feel more at one with this. I wanted to feel less separation with this thing. It turns out, 
there's a shadow side to that. It's when we're truly one with God, we're one with everything and we do feel what's going on in the world. But that principle from that quote, I felt a great disturbance in the force. That principle is oneness. Oneness is what says we are one with God and it is one with us. Oneness is what says there is absolutely no separation between us and God. Oneness is that principle that says we don't need an intermediary to get to God. We don't need nature. We don't need church. We don't need an altar. We don't need anything. Boom. All we have to do is know it and feel it. And we are one. So this is a wonderful way to be. But like like I said, there is a shadow side to this. And so with that shadow side, we have to learn to balance it. I can tell you that for me, especially in the last few years, because of the the utter craziness and devastation and icky stuff that's been going on in the world, I've struggled to find a place where I can both be one with that one and protect myself from all of that ick that stuff that's floating around in the the human consciousness of the world most days i'm successful at this sometimes i wake up in the morning and i feel it and i go oh no something's happened and i get in i find out i check out the news and sure enough something's happened but we have to protect ourselves from that consciousness in order to do our work in the world. So it's up to us to both nurture and strengthen and know our oneness, as well as not be so susceptible to the ick of the world. I'm just calling it ick, because that's what it is, the ick of the consciousness. I hope you will investigate what oneness can do for you, because it's where we get our power. We get our power back with this oneness stuff it's absolutely wonderful when I first got the concept that I was one with God that God was not something outside of me not something separate from me doing things I stopped being a professional victim because all of a sudden I was at choice I had free will I was one with something that was wise and powerful and I had access to that wisdom and that power and I wanted to take care of that and take responsibility for that and no longer be a victim to anything or anyone else in the world. So this concept was huge for me. It's also one of the most difficult things to get when we first start learning about this teaching, because most of us come into this teaching thinking that God is some guy that lives in the sky or some version of that. And this is radically different, radically different. So open up to that concept, be willing, explore it if you want to. It's a wonderful way to live. Onward. There is no such thing as luck. (laughs) In science of mind, we like to say there's no such thing as miracles. Well, this is because from that place of oneness, we believe in the power of our thoughts and we believe in the power of our thoughts to create. And so what happens in our life, what we create, it's not luck. We created it. It's not a miracle. We created it. We used the creative process that we teach in this, in this teaching to create it. Love that. Love that. Here's another one. The force is what gives a Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us and it binds the galaxy together. Okay, so we're back to oneness again. And in this quote, it says that that this force is an energy, energy field and it's created by all living things, which means us. What that does is once again put responsibility squarely in my lap 
to do my part to ensure that that energy field is full of good. It's full of compassion. It's full of unconditional love. It's full of all wonderful things in life. There is no room for hatred or intolerance or bigotry or closed-mindedness or any of that other stuff in this teaching. There just isn't. And I'm pretty insistent about that. The belonging you are seeking is not behind you. It is in front of you. Now, this quote's kind of different because we all want to belong, right? The belonging is not where we've been in life. It's not our past. It's not our history. I'm going to go so far as to say that what is in our past is totally and completely irrelevant. It really is. Now, I know there's folks out there that want to remember the past and use it as a, they want to embrace it. They want to give it some power in their lives. And this might work really well for people who have good pasts. But if you're like me, and much of the past is not so good, then we need to release that stuff. We need to let go of it. And the belonging goes in front of us and the belonging again starts with oneness so I'm coming back full circle with this coming back full circle oh my goodness okay here's another one and this was the first quote I learned in that first movie that I saw and it stuck with me forever and ever and ever and I've got to tell you I still use this quote today and I use it in people I work with and it frustrates the living shit out of them when I tell them this. Here's what I say. Do or do not. There is no try. And of course, that's from Yoda. He's my hero. Master Yoda is my hero. Do or do not. There is no try. We either set an intention to do something and we set out achieving that instant intention or we don't. If we just, if we use the language, well, I'll try. No, no, that's wishy-washy. Don't do that. Set the firm intention. I am this. I am going to do that. Or better yet, I'm doing it right now. Set that intention. Be that intention. Here's another quote that I absolutely love. And again, it's from Yoda. He says, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. So here's the deal with fear, guys. We all have it. In the Course in Miracles, it states that we only have two basic states of consciousness or emotions, fear or love. And if we're living in, if we've got a fear-based consciousness, If we're living from a place of fear, we're going to experience ick in our life. We're going to feel negative. We're going to feel pessimistic. We're going to express that negativity and that pessimism. We might not be very tolerant. We might not be very accepting. We might not be very kind. We do things behind fear that are not so nice. That's how fear is the path to the dark side. It does lead to anger. And anger leads to hate. And hate leads to suffering. So if you're suffering, you might want to take a look at the fears that you are feeling. Try this. Make a list of everything you're afraid of. Just write it down willy-nilly. Quick, easy. Make a list. Everything you're afraid of. From little tiny things like spiders, although For some people, spiders aren't little tiny things. Um, You know, critters that go go whisper in the night, um, things that go bump in the night, bigger things like life-threatening illness or divorce or death even. List all your fears down. And then take one of those little itty-bitty fears 
and sit and get quiet for a moment and then think about, ask yourself this question. What's my first instinctive reaction when this fear comes up? And write that down. Now, when you look at that, you're going to see that your first instinctive reaction is going to be some version of flight, fight, or freeze. Guess what? How you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you're feeling fear, whether it's fear of a little thing or fear of a big thing, you're going to do the same basic thing behind the fear. The key here is get rid of the fear. And we get rid of the fear by replacing it with love. So we get to make a list of all the things we love. We get to make a list of all the times that love allows us to have that loving, kind feeling. And we just, we get to create that feeling in ourselves and keep recreating it. And every time we feel a fear, we say, thank you very much for sharing. Now go away and we replace it with love. That's how you do that. That's how you do that. Okay, here's another quote from Obi-Wan Kenobi. He says, if you define yourself by your power to take life, your desire to dominate, to possess, then you have nothing. So if we're moving through life trying to dominate or take or possess, might want to take a look at that. It's not a very good way to live. It really isn't. It really isn't. (sighs) I am one with the force and one with me. More oneness. Seems like there's a lot of oneness coming through here. It seems like this is what's calling out. There's a story in one of the Star Wars movies where Luke is training with Yoda in the swamp. And he's trying to lift his ship out of the swamp and he can't do it. And Yoda simply does it. And Luke Luke can't believe that. Now here's the deal with belief. They come true. Whatever it is, we believe it comes true. This is a spiritual principle in our teaching. Our beliefs manifest It's called the law of attraction. And it's not about what we think or what we do. It's about what we believe. And so if you're manifesting stuff in your life that you're not too happy with, you might want to take a look at your beliefs. You might want to take a look at your beliefs. Here's another one. You must unlearn what you have learned. I love this one. Everything we've learned in life. You know, it might have served us well, probably did serve us really, really well. And it may have served us really, really well for a really long time. But guess what? Not so much anymore. Because if we're walking this spiritual path, if we're doing the deal, if we're doing spiritual practices like meditation and treatment, our own form of affirmative prayer and and changing our beliefs and nurturing and forming and strengthening our oneness and we're doing all that stuff, and we're living that lifestyle, we are going to change. But yet, if we change, and we still have all these old things we've learned, they don't fit so well together anymore. And so we're going to have to learn some new things. And it doesn't matter how many years of recovery we have. It doesn't matter how many initials we've got after our last name. It doesn't matter how many titles we've got before our name. None of that matters. There are going to be times in life when we are going to be called upon to unlearn what we have learned. But the beauty of that is that we get to learn new stuff. So we're almost at 20 minutes here. That flew right by. I hope you enjoyed this. I did. Um... Without a script, it was kind of interesting. I like to do a script and edit it and edit it and edit it till the cows come home because I'm not too quick on my feet, you know? Stuff comes to me after the fact. So I'll probably listen to this later and go, oh, shit, why didn't I say that? 
but I'm going to let it go. I'm going to release it. I'm going to set it and record and re put this online for you all to hear. And so I will present you now with my classic closing. Fearlessly Feral Living is a focus ministry of Centers for Spiritual Living. And I do very much appreciate your support. And there's a number of ways you can support me. You can support the podcast. The links are in the show notes. My podcast is broadcast on Buzzspout, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. You can become a member of our Patreon page and be a member of our Patreon group. We're at patreon.com slash fearlessly feral. You can donate at our PayPal page. And all these links are also on my website at fearlesslyferal.org. Again, the links are in the show notes and they're on my website at fearlesslyferal.org. I thank you so much for listening. I very much appreciate it. And I am knowing fearlessly feral living for you right here and right now. Thank you.